Hello everyone. In this video, I'll walk you through the standard takeoff and landing procedures, basic autopilot functionality, as well as some unique features like in-flight fuel tanks jettison and how to perform a dump and burn show. Before we take to the skies, we need to plan our route. Today's flight begins at Edwards Air Force Base, departing from runway 23 left. We'll navigate using the non-directional beacon, NDB, with call sign GWF. Then, we'll make a right turn following the right downwind pattern, proceed to the VORDME beacon named EDW, and finally, make a final approach to runway 23 left using the instrument landing system or ILS. Let's input the frequencies manually. ADF frequency is 282. NAV frequency is 116.4. And ILS frequency is 110.1. Set the takeoff and landing heading to 226 degrees. This will also be our approach course. But just the altitude. We won't climb too high, setting it at 4,000 feet. Our takeoff weight is nearing the maximum, so the calculated takeoff speed, V1, will be 185 knots. Verify the takeoff configuration. Flaps and slats are extended. Wing position is at 16 degrees. The takeoff trim green light is on. And landing lights are turned on. Throttle to full. Engage afterburners. Release brakes. Positive acceleration. Disable nose wheel steering. V1. Rotate. Positive climb. Gear up. Flaps up. Landing lights off. Activate the autopilot using the standard hotkey or by toggling the pitch and roll switches to the on position. This engages the basic stabilization mode, where the autopilot maintains the attitude set by the pilot. To avoid exceeding speed limits with the current wing configuration, let's turn off afterburners and reduce speed slightly. By moving the joystick past a certain sensitivity threshold, we can manually set the desired pitch and roll for the aircraft. During this adjustment, the autopilot disengages and enters a standby mode, indicated by the yellow indicator here displayed ref not engaged. Releasing the joystick re-engages the autopilot and holds the aircraft in the adjusted position. For this mode to work properly, the aircraft needs sufficient speed for pitch control, roughly around 350 to 400 knots minimum. Observe how the autopilot maintains the set pitch and roll angles. Ensure the ref not engaged indicator turns off upon releasing the joystick, if it persists, joystick calibration in Windows device settings may be necessary. We've exceeded the speed limit, indicated by the red warning light on the left side of the instrument panel. The speed limitation is also displayed on the airspeed indicator, showing the maximum allowable speed based on the current wing configuration and flight mode. Adjust engine thrust to decrease speed. The next autopilot mode is altitude hold. Activate the pitch switch to altitude hold. The autopilot will now maintain the selected altitude, which was previously set during the altitude pre-select. 
Currently, the autopilot is descending to 4,000 feet. We can also set altitude hold to the current flight level by toggling the pitch steer switch to altitude reference. This adjusts the altitude pre-select knob to the current altitude, displaying the reference pitch on the attitude indicator and head-up display. Toggle this mode again for the autopilot to intercept the new selected altitude. Let's continue our flight. We've deviated slightly from the initial flight plan, so we need to turn right to return to the course. On the standby compass, we see the reading of the number 2 arrow pointing to the non-directional beacon, or NDB, with the call sign GWF, based on the set frequency in the Automatic Direction Finding Radio, or ADF. Since the NDB is not very precise, we see the arrow fluctuating, approximately indicating the direction of the beacon. The closer we are to the NDB, the more accurate the arrow's readings become. At the moment, the ADF arrow roughly points to a heading of 20 degrees. Turn to this heading. Note the presence of arrow number 1, indicating the VOR or TAC and navigation beacons, depending on the autopilot mode. When there is no signal or the autopilot is off, it always points to 2 o'clock. The NDB is straight ahead. As we are quite close to the beacon, the ADF arrow clearly points in the direction of the NDB. When passing over the beacon, the arrow will smoothly turn in the opposite direction. Now we need to turn 90 degrees to the left to get back on the planned flight route. The next autopilot mode we'll look at is navigation using the VOR radio beacon. To engage this mode, set the mode switch on the autopilot coupler panel to NAV. Now, the HSI bearing arrow indicates the exact direction of the Edwards VOR beacon and the deviation from the set course. This same direction is duplicated by arrow number 1 on the standby radio compass. Initiate a right turn according to the right downwind approach pattern. Edwards Beacon also features distance measurement equipment, DME. So now, on the HSI, we can see the distance to the beacon in miles. The next autopilot mode is for tracking the current direction, activated by switching the course channel selector to constant track. This auxiliary autopilot mode is used briefly when we need to change the modes on the autopilot coupler panel. We can see the heading marker aligning with the course. Switch to manual heading mode on the autopilot. Enable automatic heading tracking. Now, the autopilot will maintain the course according to the setting on the heading bug. Let's fly slightly to the right of the current course and then return to parallel course. Manual course mode operates similarly, with control established by setting the OBS course pointer. Temporarily return to the heading stabilization mode, and then switch back to the NAV mode on the autopilot coupler panel to see our position relative to the Edwards radio beacon. As we approach the third turn, let me tell you about the jettison system. 
we took off with four external fuel tanks, and our takeoff weight was approaching the maximum. Additionally, these external tanks create significant aerodynamic drag, reducing cruise speed and increasing fuel consumption. On the fuel gauge indicator, we can check the remaining fuel in the external tanks. With the automatic fuel pump mode enabled, fuel is consumed in the following order. First, the external tanks. Then the wing tanks. And finally, the internal tanks. We can see that there is still fuel in the central external tanks, but we will jettison them to demonstrate how it works. To drop the external fuel tanks in the normal mode, we should power up the weapon system on the left console first. Then, the weapons control officer highlights the suspension points we intend to release by pressing corresponded buttons. Next, we should select the action type, Jettison. The indicators display the type of suspension selected for Jettison. Press the smoke on hotkey to initiate the release. Let's switch to an external view, so we can release the fuel tanks by pressing the hotkey and observe the animation of the jettison. Don't forget to enable external views controls by pressing the standard C key. Now, our aircraft is significantly lighter, aerodynamic drag has reduced, and we observe a speed increase. Maintain course and climb to 6,000 feet. Now, while there's a bit of time left, I'll quickly demonstrate how to activate the dump and burn feature. First, you need to enable fuel dump by flipping the switch on the fuel system control panel. Then, move the engines to full throttle and engage afterburners. The afterburner flame ignites the dumped fuel, and we observe the beautiful blaze of burning fuel. To be honest, I'm not sure of any practical purpose for this function other than creating spectacular displays at air shows. If anyone knows, feel free to share in the comments. Turn off the fuel dump and afterburners, and let's return to the landing approach. We have flown quite a distance from Edwards' beacon, and it's time to begin the third turn. Make a right turn of 90 degrees in stabilization mode. descend to 4,000 feet. Perhaps we descended too early, losing the radio beacon signal. Let's return to 5,000 feet. Enable NAV track mode, and now the autopilot will automatically guide us to the set course for the radio beacon. The arrows indicate that we are approaching the course, and the autopilot begins the turn towards the beacon. As you can see, the autopilot precisely aligned us with the course. Right after the Edwards radio beacon is our glide slope entry point. Let's prepare for landing. Switch to the next autopilot mode, Instrument Landing System or ILS. Recall that we set the ILS frequency for runway 23 left at the beginning of the flight. Now, the autopilot should guide us onto the approach and glide slope. Seems too easy, let's make it more challenging. The weather is just right for a landing.
let's illuminate the panels and consoles. We approach the glide slope entry point. The glide slope marker appears. Set the wing to 16 degrees, extend the landing gear and flaps. The autopilot should automatically intercept the glide slope, and the pitch steering switch will automatically return to the off position. Extend flaps to 25 degrees and maintain a speed between 230 and 240 knots. The autopilot automatically switched to the glide slope holding mode. Fully extend the flaps. Turn on the landing lights. Check the activation of ground spoilers for effective braking. Monitor the radio altimeter. The F-111 is not equipped with an automatic landing system, so we will need to switch to manual control mode and disengage the autopilot when reaching the decision altitude. If the runway is not in direct view, we may have to go around for a second attempt. So far, everything is going smoothly. On course. On the glide slope. You can also make a manual approach with NAV track turned off, relying on the directive bars on the head up display and attitude indicator. Approaching the decision height. Observe the runway. Decision, we're landing. Reduce speed. Disengage the autopilot. Align. Reduce thrust. Touchdown. Feel the activation of the ground spoiler system. Decelerating. Speed 120. Speed 100. Begin braking. The landing. Engaging the nose wheel steering system. Taxi off the runway. So, we've covered all the basic autopilot functions. In the next parts of the tutorial video, we will explore autopilot operation during route flying and delve into radio operations using channel presets. Thanks for your attention, subscribe, like, and leave your comments.